everybody. It's Tanishia, also known as Crafty of Crafty Creations. And I am here today with another tutorial on the rolling trays. Uh, I have done one previously that I showed you all how to make a tray using a, a Cricut machine and printing stickers and things of that sort. Today, I am going to show you how to make a rolling tray. And I say rolling tray, y'all. They're not just rolling trays. They're not just for smoking products. They're for jewelry. They're for coins. They're for perfume bottles, for your vanity, for your bathroom. These little trays are awesome for so many things. They are called tobacco rolling trays. So I'm going to demonstrate uh, how I put some trays together. Now, in particular, this is the one that I am going to demonstrate first, uh, the wood grain style. This has gotten pretty popular, and there are so many different ways that you can do a wood grain tray. Um, I would like to show y'all how to put together a tray like this. It does not require a computer. It does not require a printer. It does not require uh, a Cricut. No cutting machine, a silhouette, nothing like that. Uh, there are some other trays for those that are wanting to make some that might go on a dresser, that might go on a vanity or something of that sort. I'm going to show you all how I put trays like this together without the use of any machines. Stay tuned. Okay, crafters, we are going to make rolling trays or make trays, I guess I'll just call them trays, from the nickel-plated trays that you find at your local Dollar Tree. Um, I now order them um, in, in quantity online uh, until they run out. Uh, they come in that oval, a circle shape. These are kind of hard to find in my neck of the woods here in the Midwest, Kansas City, uh, and the rectangle trays. This is the one I'm going to demonstrate first, and it may be the only one I demonstrate because you pretty much do the same thing with the other two. You just change the shape. Now, if you guys recall, on my last video, I did offer a template in uh, corrugated plastic uh, and also in acrylic. Uh, I still have those if you, if you need those in order to help you get this project done. But you're going to see me using this template when I cut my papers for these trays. Um, you can pretty much make the same thing by tracing your tray and cutting just about a quarter of an inch inside of the lines that will get you precisely in the middle of this. But first thing you're going to do is grab a tray, okay? And the way we are going to create this wood grain effect on these trays is with another Dollar Tree item, contact paper comes on a roll, just like this. That's contact paper. People use it to cover their shelves. Uh, I know back in the day, we used to use it on our notebooks for um, and our folders for, for school to cover them to make them look different. Um, I have found it at Dollar Tree. Uh, this is their brand. Contact paper also makes a brand, uh, or their brand in wood grain. I have a dark brown wood and I have a light brown wood, and that's what we're going to be working with today. I will also point out this contact paper is very much the same as the paper, uh, vinyl paper that you use in a Cricut or Silhouette cutting machine that comes on a roll. I'm giving you this information for a reason. You can cover these metal trays with either contact paper that you get at the local dollar store, or if you go into the craft section of your Walmarts or your Targets, or to Michael's, Hobby Lobby, whatever major craft store is in your area, you will find rolls and you will find sheets of sticky 
paper, vinyl paper, that you can also use to cover these trays. And I'm going to demonstrate that as well. So what we're going to use is a six by nine tray, nickel plated tray that I got from Dollar Tree. We're gonna grab a roll of wood grain, wood look, whatever you wanna call it, contact paper. That, gonna use some scissors. And of course, our epoxy. And I'm gonna show you how to mix that at the end. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is paint your tray. Now on mine, I just paint where I need to paint, which is right on the edges. If I'm doing uh, a tray that's painted with no contact paper, then I paint the entire tray. Okay, now that you have your tray painted, I usually do this a little earlier in the day uh, so that this has plenty of time to dry. But if you are using the Rust-Oleum brand uh, two times paint that I recommend, uh, you may have heard me mention this on some other projects and some other videos, the Rust-Oleum two times brand, this dries ready to, ready to go in, in 20, 30 minutes. You can start with this. But the first thing we're gonna do after we've painted the tray is cut out our contact paper to go onto the tray. Now, one thing you need to pay attention to, if you look at this, you see the wood grain has a pattern. Now you determine which way you want your tray to go. If you want your pattern to go this way, then you need to cut this way. If you want your wood grain to go from left to right, then you need to turn your contact paper and you need to cut this way. For this demonstration, I am going to cut my wood grain, I guess this is long ways, left to right, and I am gonna use one of my templates. You can also turn this thing upside down on your contact paper and trace around it. Now, one of the things I find, if you use this whole outline for the pattern, the outside of the tray, you're going to get coverage that goes all the way up to the very edge of your tray, all the way up to the edge. If you use my template or what goes on the inside, this inside portion, then your tray is going to look like this. I personally prefer this look. Um, I, I just don't like fussing with these corners and all of that. I will show you how to do those if you want to come all the way up to the edge. But generally speaking, mine fits right down, right down in the, in the middle, okay? So we are going to trace my template Okay, we're gonna trace my template just like this. Nothing fancy, just trace right around it. Now I could have been a little more conservative on my paper and did that a little bit neater so as not to use the roll, but I'm moving quick. And now I'm gonna cut this out. Okay, now that you have your rectangle shape cut out, you have the edges of your tray painted, or the whole tray, however you chose to do it, okay? You're gonna peel off from this contact paper. You're gonna peel that apart, just like that. This is one huge vinyl sticker basically, that you cut out of a larger vinyl sticker, OK? 
Okay, so we're gonna square this up and line it up as best that we can. Um, I find sometimes folding it helps. It's just kind of a trial and error thing. Uh, sometimes I make mistakes and I have to peel it off and start all the way over. Now that was a good guess. Uh, but one thing you need to keep in mind is you have to make sure once you put this down that you smooth this all the way up into the corners. All the way up into the corners. Now on this tray, because I didn't cut it long and go all the way up to the edges, with that little template that I offer, this just slides right up in there and fits. You see, that just goes flush. This is just a little spatula thing that came in one of my epoxy kits, uh, probably for mixing epoxy. But I use this or a straight edge of some kind, anything, a, a credit card, anything will do this. Uh, because you don't want epoxy to get under this sticker. This has got to be flush down to your tray in order for that epoxy to sit on top of it and not seep under. So I just go all the way around and make sure that I have this completely, completely sealed. Okay? Now, essentially, you do the same thing with any other pieces of uh, contact paper or Cricut paper. Okay? So let me show you this. These are other sheets of contact paper or Cricut paper cut paper. Um, it comes on a, on a, a piece of, uh, it's a big sticker, essentially. It's a piece of vinyl on a sticker backed paper with a pattern already on it. Now, those of you that aren't familiar with crickets or silhouettes are, are probably not used to seeing stuff like this. In the craft stores and in the craft sections of your Walmarts and Targets and places like that, they have these sheets. Okay, they come in a little 12 by 12 square or they come on a roll where you get a large quantity. You can do the same thing with this Cricut paper, okay, that you do with this contact paper, okay? It's the same concept. You're gonna trace, you're gonna trace your, um, square or rectangle, I guess this would be, or oval, if you're making an oval tray, just the same, depending on which way you want your lines to go or how you want that to fit, and it will cover your tray. This camouflage tray, here, I did out of a piece of contact paper. I painted my tray green where I needed to paint it. I got a roll of contact paper in camo, traced it with my template. Boom, once I covered it with epoxy, I have a camo tray, okay? This is how easy this is, y'all. I'm not using a computer, I'm not using a Cricut cutting machine, not using a silhouette, uh, none of that, no printer, none of that. Okay, this here, contact paper. This would make an awesome jewelry tray. Okay, you can set your little pretty stuff on your dresser or on your vanity or wherever. This is another roll of contact paper. I cut it in the shape of a circle on, on using one of these circle trays from Dollar Tree. This is also a nickel plated tray. They're a little bit harder to find uh, as opposed to these oval and the rectangle ones. Same concept, I traced, traced the circle, came in about an inch because it's a, the center, okay? Trace painted black, cut out a circle, slapped it on my tray, okay? The same thing I did with this glitter. This is not paint, this is a piece of contact paper, okay? Or a piece of Cricut vinyl paper, which is the same pretty much as contact paper. 
it comes in sheets. This is one giant glitter sticker, okay? You're gonna cut this in the shape of your tray and you're going to use that. Same thing here, sticker uh, glitter paper. That's how you create something like this. Stickers, that's all it is, okay? So back to the tray that we were working on, okay? We're gonna finish up our wood grain tray. I just wanted to make sure you all understood. This, this paper here comes in a lot of different patterns, a lot of different colors. Um, all of the colors aren't, pat you know, it's not all patterns. They've got solid colors, solid blue. You can see I cut something out of that one. You can get that, that paper in, in a vast array of colors. This wood grain, the light and the dark, I found at local Dollar Tree. So let's finish up with that wood grain tray. Okay, so now that we have uh, stuck down our contact paper, our wood grain contact paper that we got from our local Dollar Tree, okay, this one's with the light contact paper. We cut the paper in the direction that we wanted our wood grain to go, okay? You're either gonna go top to bottom or you're gonna go left to right. I chose left to right, and I'm making sure this is all the way flushed down so when I pour my epoxy, none seeps under. That is very, very important. If epoxy gets under this sticker, this tray is gonna look terrible and you're gonna have to start over, okay? So what we are going to do is complete a tray that looks similar to this. This is simply a sticker. I have had several people ask me about licensing and blah, blah, blah. These are trays that I make for my folks, okay? And what I do that I feel like protects me from infringing on someone else's license is I purchase my stickers. Uh, and look, these were on clearance, 75 cents from $3.42. These are licensed stickers that are for sale in the local stores. And that's what I use on my trays. Um, I feel like if I purchase it, I can stick it on anything I want. It's my tray. So that's my take on that. The tray we're going to complete is a sporting Kansas City tray. Got Kansas City Chiefs here. I love this tray. I'm gonna do a blue one in Sporting Kansas City. Could have also done a blue one for the Royals. Could have done blue and red for KU with a football or something of that nature. But all I did was buy a sticker. Bought a sticker. I'm gonna stick it to my tray. Now this has got a lot of uh, clear paper around it. Uh, and I'm gonna trim a little bit of that off so that there's not so much sticker on my tray. I might make it a little difficult to get the thing off the paper now. Uh, but I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. And so I don't have so much sticker to stick down. And pretty much, okay, you see that fantastic decal awesome gonna stick it right in the middle of this tray okay and i'm gonna smooth it down i'm gonna smooth it down until that clear part disappears into the wood grain so i can't hardly see it anymore you see how rub that in if you use another type of sticker I prefer the ones that are what you call die cut. They are cut right to the shape of the sticker, okay? This is ready for epoxy. Basically, I took two stickers, a large piece of contact paper and a team sticker, and I have made a Sporting Kansas City rolling tray, okay? So that's the same concept that I used on this tray. Now, of course, this has epoxy and other stuff done to it. And I'm going to show you how to do that on this Sporting Kansas City tray. 
But let me show you something else. Now, the same concept with the stickers is what I used to make these trays. Okay? That's my nickname. And the people that know me get this tray and what this is all about. But these are stickers that I got from Dollar Tree. Letter stickers and picture stickers. And I created that rolling tray. Now, this is one that's a little rough because me and that glitter vinyl didn't do too well. That was rough. I probably should have picked a different brand. You might keep that in mind with the glitter. Cricut is probably the better brand to go with on that glitter paper because it's a little bit sturdier. This was really, really thin and flimsy and a little hard to work with. So I made some mistakes. But I essentially used the glitter paper, okay? Added a butterfly sticker that I got from Dollar Tree and some letters that I got from uh, the lettering I got at Michael's. They did not have the gold letters at Dollar Tree, okay? But this is all stickers, this is no printer, no computer, no cricket, no silhouette. All stickers. Made a rolling tray. Okay? Here's another one. I did this one for my mom's bathroom to sit on her vanity. Her bathroom is gold and it's butterflies. All Dollar Tree. I painted the tray gold. Didn't use any contact paper. Painted this tray gold. You see that? Added some stickers. The reflection of my ring lights going off in there. This one, I didn't paint at all. This one, I used a sheet of stick-on jewels from Dollar Tree, covered it with epoxy. I now have a tray to do with whatever I choose. Okay, let me show you these things, y'all. This is all stuff that you purchase already put together, okay? Sheets of letters, those are things you want to purchase from your Dollar Tree, from your craft stores, Michaels, things like that. There's my little poop emojis that was stuck on my tray. Got those at one of the craft stores, maybe Dollar Tree. I can't even remember. These came from Walmart, licensed decals. Okay, those would look awesome on a tray. The Sporting Kansas City like we just did. Here's some other lettering I got at Dollar Tree. These are what you call die cut letters. The letters are cut right to the shape of the letter. So there's no white that will be showing on your tray. It will literally be just the sticker. Okay, here's the butterflies that I got from Dollar Tree. This is one, one little thing for a dollar. Look how many butterflies are on there. Looked really pretty, I thought, on this, this gold tray, especially with the epoxy. Dollar Tree, okay. Here are the jewels like I used on the jewel tray. These are stick on, okay? That comes from Dollar Tree. That's Dollar Tree to make this tray here. Uh, here's some other stickers, just examples of other stickers. If you were doing something for a kid's room, I don't know, for them to stick their magnetic letters to, Baby Shark, there's all different kinds of stickers. There's a thing with me in this poop emoji, it's a long story. But a pretty dresser tray, flower stickers, uh, little girl's room, little mermaid kittens. There's so many different ways you can do these trays and you don't have to use your Cricut, a Cricut. Um, you don't have to use a printer, uh, a computer of any kind. You go to your local craft section in your store also back in the home goods section is where you find shelf paper. That's essentially what this is, contact paper. And you can create this. Now for the epoxy. I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, so now we're getting ready to do the epoxy on our tray, okay? We have spray painted our tray in a complementary color to whatever we're going to put on it. Okay, we used our template and mine's all colored because I do a whole bunch of crazy stuff with it. But we used a template or we traced our tray onto the wood grain contact paper in whatever direction we wanted our wood grain to go, be it top to bottom or left to right. Okay, and then we applied that to the tray 
just like a sticker. Pushed it down flush to make sure it was sealed all the way around because we do not want this epoxy when we mix it uh, to get underneath this. And then we added a decal that I bought at Walmart on clearance for 75 cents. Okay, and now the epoxy, okay? A lot of people freak out about epoxy. It's really not as hard as you think for something as simple as a tray. It's not like we're getting ready to pour dominoes or make an ashtray or do a canvas or anything like that. This is a simple tray pour. It's not a real deep pour. It's nothing real complicated. And I'm gonna show you how to do it, okay? Now, I have been using, uh, because I'm doing some other things with resin. Uh, I now make dominoes and ashtrays and all kind of other stuff. Uh, and I found that the epoxy brand that I had been using um, I had to change the type of epoxy depending on my project. And I wanted an epoxy that could cover several different projects without me having to keep inventory of a bunch of different stuff. So I have switched to Envirotex. That is what I use uh, now for both my dominoes and for my rolling trays. And they come in a variety of sizes, uh, just like the other brand that I used to use. Uh, and of course, I now get those almost by the trough because I use so much epoxy. But it comes with your hardener and it comes with your resin. So you're going to need to purchase your epoxy kit. Okay. And this is a this is a much larger size than what you need. This tray requires about three ounces of epoxy to complete it nicely. Uh, so the little... Uh, I think there is a two ounce size. I know for sure there is a four ounce size because we're getting ready to offer that on our site as well. Uh, and it is more than enough to complete your kit. And when I say three ounces of epoxy, I mean one and one half ounce of hardener and one and one half ounce of the actual resin. Those mixed together make a total of three ounces. That's what it takes to cover a tray. So you're gonna need your epoxy. Uh, you need gloves. I use these little disposable measured cups. You can see they've got little lines on them so you can, uh, I can keep track of, of how much epoxy I'm pouring. This stuff is not cheap. Uh, and you need some sticks to mix everything. Now, some people recommend um, a mask. There are some brands of epoxy that are very, very toxic. The fumes are very toxic. Um, this particular brand that I use you do not have to wear a face mask. It is a skin irritant, however, supposedly. I've gotten it on me. Nothing crazy has happened yet. Who knows? I may grow up third eye or something in a few years. Who knows? Anyways, this brand does not require me to have to have the face mask on. If it makes you feel safer to have it, then grab yourself a face mask. There's plenty going around these days, let me tell you. So gloves for sure, measuring cups, sticks, your epoxy, and let's pour, let's pour this tray. Okay, so I am going to mix uh, this one and a half isn't really, really clear on here. So just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and pour two ounces of each. I just now realized this on these cups. This is a different brand than I usually use of my cups. But we need to make sure we have equal parts. That is imperative. If you have one ounce of hardener, you must have one ounce of resin. Two ounces hardener, two ounces resin. They must be equal parts, okay? So just to make sure I'm not off in my measurements because I don't have a little line, I'm going to go to two on this cup. It's more than what I need and I probably won't use it all. But just to make sure I have enough to cover the tray because you don't want the tray to be... Um, so full of resin that it, it's no longer a tray. You don't fill the tray up to the very top. Then it's just kind of more like a platter. It doesn't hold anything. It just, everything sits on top. 
So you just do enough resin to epoxy to coat over what you have placed onto the tray to, to cover it and secure it, to make it permanent. Um, I heard that it's also dishwasher safe. I have never tested that to find out. Uh, can't imagine why you would do that. So we're going to do another two ounces of the resin. It's a little bit thicker. Okay. Okay, make sure we got those even. And that's where your sticks come in. I also keep one for helping me smooth this out. And before I start to pour, I'm gonna make sure this is flush. These edges are down. There's nothing on it. Everything looks just like I want it to look. Any loose debris, anything. Get all that off of there. Make sure this is ready. Once you put that epoxy on, epoxy on here, it's done. That's it. Okay? So we're gonna mix the two together. You want to make sure you get everything out of there. And one thing I have noticed, uh, especially when I'm doing doing my dominoes, because it takes a little longer than the tray, this stuff starts heating up. It starts a chemical reaction in here, and it uh, starts to heat up. Okay? So I'm going to mix this for a good minute. And then we're going to pour. One thing you want to keep in mind, you know, epoxy does get bubbles. Okay, you will get bubbles in your epoxy. I have not yet found a way to mix this that you don't get any bubbles. Um, one thing that helps is not to go really, really fast when you mix it. Uh, the more you whip it around in the cup, the more bubbles you get. Um, a blow dryer will help remove those bubbles. Uh, isopropyl alcohol, which I usually keep in a spray bottle. Oh, there it is right there. Uh, that works well with my dominoes because I don't like to heat up those molds. Uh, like the creme brulee torch, that works. Or my method of slamming it against something hard, burst the bubbles. But now that you have it mixed... Okay, and you can see this is four ounces of epoxy now because it was two of resin and two of hardener. And basically, you just fill this tray in. I start at the edges. That's just my technique. I don't know that there is a special way to do it. And maybe there's somebody that's more of a resin expert that knows better. But you're going to just basically pour this into the tray and fill it all the way in. Now, really three ounces is enough, so I'm not gonna use all of that because I don't want this filled all the way to the top. But I just kind of smooth my epoxy around there. This is self-leveling. You have to make sure that your tray is on an even surface. If your surface is sideways, your epoxy is gonna dry sideways. Uh, I actually have a table in the other area over there that I have a level on uh, because it is imperative for my trays and my dominoes and my ashtrays or anything you make with resin that it be level. If it's not level, then your creation dries in whatever direction that your tray is slanted. And that is not, that's not what you want. Okay, so this is the finished product. Now you can still see little bubbles in there. What I do is take this and I bang it a few times. I'm gonna have to do this on the concrete because I can't smack it as hard as I want to on this table and put it in the other room to dry. And I'm gonna show you with this, um, with the other tray that I made, 
how we finish the edges because this one still actually needs to dry. But I'm going to show you what you do to the edges of these after you um, pour your epoxy and it dries, okay? So I'm going to go put this on the drying table and let this level after I drop it about three more times and get the rest of those bubbles out of there. And I'll show you how to finish this up. Okay, now once you have... Your epoxy dries on your tray. And this is more so for the painted trays because you want this paint to stay on these trays. Uh, when you paint your edges, you want that paint to stay forever just like the epoxy stays forever, okay? So the epoxy is not up there on the edges. So what I do is I use in the same brand of that I use of my paint, Rust-Oleum. They have a two times gloss clear, and they also have triple thick glaze. Now this is really thick. You have to really watch what you're doing with this and you can make mistakes. This tray here, it's probably a little bit difficult to see, but I used that triple thick and I sprayed too heavy in some areas and there's a little bit of overspray you can see where it has run down now normally what i would do it i would have just went over the whole tray with the triple thick and made it blend but i left it like that on purpose because i wanted y'all to see that overspray the triple thick is a different consistency than the ultra clear uh and then the epoxy you cannot spray the edges of these trays with wet epoxy uh, it will look worse than this. Let the tray dry completely. That's why I'm not spraying the Sporting Kansas City one. We just finished because it's still wet and it will ruin the tray. So on your painted trays, your epoxy is on the edges or in the middle. I'm sorry, not on the edges. So you want to protect this layer of, of paint with something so that the tray will last as long as... The edges of the tray will last as long as the middle. Here's another tray done with a different type of contact paper. Essentially, all you need to do, you purchase your, your clear cover with a proper face mask, okay? And gloves and proper ventilation. You're gonna spray just the edges of your tray. Now this will dry in about 15 minutes because this is that, that quick dry and Rust-Oleum stuff. I really love it. So I'm going to go set this on the other table to dry. And in a nutshell, y'all, that's how you make a rolling tray without a computer, a printer, a Cricut, any of that. Okay, this is the final finishing touch. The very last thing you do on your tray is spray your edges with the epoxy, with the, uh, well, I guess it is epoxy, it's spray epoxy, okay? And then we're gonna let that dry. Okay, now while we're waiting on those to dry just a little bit, I wanted to kind of reiterate a couple of things for you all. Um, again, this is making your rolling tray without a computer without a Cricut, without a printer, you're essentially going to buy contact paper on a roll. Or you buy Cricut vinyl or Silhouette vinyl or Sizer brand vinyl in the stores in a sheet. Okay? Already printed. Already with a pattern. Wood grain if that's what you want to do. Um, buffalo check camo okay so many different patterns you're going to trace your tray onto your paper or you can order one of these fun little templates that we sell it won't be cruddy like that it'll just be plain uh we have these in acrylic on our website uh they're four bucks and they're made of acrylic like uh 
I don't even have one over here. I'll grab one um, so that you can see it. But they're acrylic plastic and they're going to last, last you forever. So you're going to cut the shape of your tray, be it rectangle or be it oval, right out onto your contact paper. You stick it onto your tray after you have painted your edges, if you so choose. You may want to leave them silver. That's okay too. Okay? And then you add your sticker in the center and we're covering with epoxy. And finally, your triple thick glaze or your clear gloss. That's essentially it in a nutshell. Now, I did mention earlier that I would demonstrate to you all how to lay these corners down on here. If you are going to trace the outside of this tray, you're going to get more coverage than when you just trace the inside. It's going to go all the way up into the corners. And that's a delicate little area for you to, to press down, to get held flat, and to make it flush um, with the corners. And I'm going to demonstrate real quickly how to do that. Okay, now this is a little bit bigger uh, rectangle piece cut out of the contact paper than what my template does. That template that I use for these trays is what I prefer. I don't like that all over method, the all over coverage. Um, I just don't, I'm just not good at it and I just don't like doing it. Now that's not to say that there's anything wrong with doing it that way. If you can master it and you can get it, I say go for it. That's not my area of expertise. Now, I'm lining this up, and as you can see, it covers all the way to the edges, okay? Now, I didn't paint this tray or anything because I'm going to reuse this. I'm going to pull this back off of here. But I want to show you all how to do your corners on these trays so that they lay down, okay? So... I push it down. As you recall, you, you got to go from the inside out. You know, you don't want bubbles in the middle. What I do is take a little pair of scissors before I stick it all the way down. And I just cut a little slit. A little slit, just like that. Okay? Just a little slit in the edge there, okay? Okay. I'm going to cut a little slit again in this corner. Diagonal, just a little slit from the corner. Diagonal slit. Right here in the corner, diagonal slit. You do it in all four corners. Only in the corners, okay? Now let's continue to smooth this thing out. We're going to go from the, from the inside, from the middle to the out edges, okay? So we get all those bubbles out and we get it to the edge. Now, okay, now I tried to get this in real close for y'all so you could see what I was doing. But where my little slits are, okay, you see the two little, the two little pieces, you essentially are going to smooth one of them down, okay? You go ahead and smooth one down to the edge. Can you see that smooth down? Okay, and then you're just going to lay the other right over the top of it right over the top. Do you see how that just fit in there perfectly? Okay, I'm going to do it again. It almost does it by itself. This is starting to stick down a little bit. So you just lift that up. OK, 
Okay, so you smooth. Go ahead and smooth that one edge down while you're holding that other one up. Okay, and then just put the other one down over the top of it and smooth it out. I have fingernails. That works. This little spatula works. Popsicle stick will work. Okay, do the same thing in this corner. Going to peel one, pick one side up, push one side down, push one side down, then lay Lay the other side right over the top of it. Smooth it down. Oops, that one moved a little bit. Smooth it down. Okay, going to do the next corner. Because I hadn't pushed it all the way down. Okay, going to put this one, smooth that side down. Go ahead and smooth that down. Lay the other one right over top of it. I just kick that up and smooth that side down. Okay, now you see my corners there? Do you see those corners? I need to smooth them some more. There's still some bubbles in there. But you just keep going over and smoothing until you get all the bubbles out and it lays flush. Okay? You're gonna go all the way around. Now I haven't smoothed this all the way around and I also see how crooked I cut my paper moving too fast. But that's how you do your corners. Little slit at an angle in each corner and just fold it over. It smooths so perfectly. That's kind of something you do when you're sewing. I think that's how, how you make a dart. Mm, I don't remember the term, but that's it. And you can see my wood grain is going up and down on this one. That's the way I cut it. All righty. So here is the Sporting Kansas City tray. It's still a little bit wet. I can't tilt it all the way down, but you can see it. It is a copy of the Kansas City Chiefs tray. Okay. These are trays that we created without a computer or a printer or a cutting machine, neither a Cricut or a Silhouette. We used neither or none of those things to complete these trays. So, um, once again, it's the nickel plated trays from Dollar Tree. They come in three different shapes. You got your rectangle tray, they get have a circle tray. This one's a little hard to find. I just lucked up on those. And they also have an oval tray, okay? So you have the option of either painting the tray and adding various stickers, okay? Find a lot of those at Dollar Tree. Painting your tray and adding stickers and letters. No Cricut, no computer, no printer. Not painting your tray and adding contact paper, shelf paper, vinyl paper. Cricut paper that comes in various patterns and various designs, uh, wood grain. Uh, here's another pattern of shelf paper, okay? That's simple shelf paper, contact paper, Cricut vinyl paper on a painted tray, on an unpainted tray. Wood grain, contact paper on a painted tray. Wood grain contact paper on a painted tray with a sticker. No paper on the tray, just jewels and epoxy. Okay, is the look on that one. That light reflecting makes that a little hard to see. Glitter vinyl paper, stickers and letters on a tray. All of those done without a computer, without a Cricut without a printer, camouflage, shelf paper, contact paper, uh, Cricut paper on a painted tray covered with epoxy, okay? You can make any of these. All you need is the paper, a few stickers, some epoxy, gloss, and maybe paint if you choose to use it. Once again, I recommend the Rust-Oleum two times brand because you don't tend to have to use primer. And that, my friends, in a nutshell, is 
how you make a tray without a printer, a computer, um, or a Cricut. That's it in a nutshell. One thing I wanted to mention that we are working on at Crafty Creations is a kit, uh, more DIY kits for, for more crafters. Uh, our wreath kits are very, very popular. The um, diva wreaths, um, the kits and all of the accessories and all of the stuff that is used to make those. Um, but we also are starting to offer some other kits um, that people that maybe aren't as into the diva wreaths or, or wreaths at all um, might like to try. And one of those is going to be a rolling tray kit uh, for those that would like to give a shot at making a tray using one of the tutorials that I've put out. I hear that they're pretty easy to follow and hopefully uh, I can help you make a tray of your own or a tray to give to someone as a gift. But what we are offering on the website, they will not be available to ship. You can pre-order, but they are not shipping until the 15th of October, okay? We have epoxy coming in from uh, the company that is working with us um, to include those items in your kit. We're still waiting on those to get here. But what you will get in your kit, okay, is, and check out the website, you'll find the pricing information and all of the kit contents and everything outlined again there, www.crafttcreations.com, www.crafttcreations.com, that's me, crafttcreations.com, okay? In your kit comes one of these trays. All right. As long as we can continue to get these in stock, we will have this type of tray. If in the event we are unable to get those, we have a substitute that is very similar. Paints is easy. But right now you get either a rectangle tray or an oval tray. The template that goes with it that fits right in the center, either for the rectangle tray or for the oval tray, okay, you choose. You will get one piece of glossy sticker paper. That is enough to cover your tray or one piece of matte sticker paper, okay? You get both, one of each. Do what you want with those. You can print your stickers or however you choose to do that. You will get two measured mixing cups. There's little numbers on those so you can see how much epoxy you're pouring. You will get popsicle sticks or craft sticks for stirring your epoxy. And you will get a four ounce bottle of hardener and a four ounce bottle of resin. Now these are much bigger than that, but it's the Envirotex brand and they are small four ounce bottles. All that is required to complete one tray is about three ounces of epoxy. That's an ounce and a half of each hardener and uh, the uh, resin, and those will be included in your kit. We're going to have an introductory offer, so check out the website here in just a bit, and you'll be able to see the contents of those kits and the prices. Now, you can purchase one of these kits and still make one of these trays, okay, whether you have a printer or not. You have your epoxy and you have your template in the kit. You just go to um, the dollar store and buy your roll of wood grain paper or your stickers or your paint, okay? So you can still do the same trays whether you're using a Cricut, a printer, or, or, uh, or none of those. No computer aided anything at all. We're just gonna cut and stick stuff down you can do all of that with the trays that we're gonna offer. Again, it's a rectangle tray or an oval tray, okay, or an oval tray. You're gonna get matte paper and gloss paper, gloss paper, matte paper. You're gonna get mixing cups uh, for your epoxy. You're gonna get stirring sticks. 
and you're going to get a total of eight ounces of epoxy, four ounces of hardener, four ounces of resin. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for a little bit and learning how to make uh, these fun trays, uh, rolling trays uh, without a computer, without a printer, without a Cricut or a silhouette. Um, wood grain, camo, butterflies, all kinds of stuff we learned how to do today. Uh, there's also another tutorial that I made right before this one that shows you how to make these trays uh, using the uh, sticker methods and the all over methods. There are some other ways that you can do them as well. So check that one out too. You can find me at www.crafttcreations.com. Don't forget that second T. That's www.crafttcreations.com tcreations.com. You can find me on Facebook as Crafty Creates, on Instagram and Twitter of, uh, as Crafty of KC, and right here on YouTube. Please make sure you like, share, and absolutely subscribe. I'm going for the gold. And thank you so much for joining me. Happy crafting! <laughs>